How do everyone, I'm Scott from Nightfall Miniatures and today we're going to be taking a look at Vallejo's Colour Shift paint range. So originally when I saw these Colour Shift paint ranges I knew we could do something quite amazing with them and I had a bit of a gander around to see where I could find them and believe it or not, I managed to find him in one of my local hobby stores somewhere called Boys, which isn't really a hobby store. It sells all sorts of just stuff and tat and all sorts of stuff that you can fix your house with and uh, things that you can hobby with as well by the looks of things. So me and my mates tend to go to Boys whenever we want to pick up some Vallejo paints. So they've got all their model colour range there, the air colour range there. They've got some of the pigments and some more hobby tools that they just can't pick up from a local games workshop store. And as I say, I was looking for this set online and I just couldn't find it anywhere with a decent delivery time, uh, especially due to, you know, the disease that Nurgle's blessed everybody with. So I was so happy when I managed to find this set. We just sat behind the till. I didn't even go in for it. I went in to pick up some bits and pieces and it was just sat there behind the till and it cost me like less than 20 quid. So I said to the missus, you're going to have to hold off on your bacon sandwich from Grace because I need to buy these paints. And I picked them up, took them back home. And the idea and the, the whole point of me getting these and, and wanting to do this sort of video on these today is I've started playing Eldar recently in preparation for when we can actually have a game and with Eldar's nature being in space and galaxy and quite mysterious and my whole theme around my Eldar being like a nebula galaxy sort of theme as you can see right now this is the sort of stuff I've been working on and I thought the weapons especially things like mirror swords and stuff would look absolutely amazing if they had this sort of paint on the sort of paint where it's going to just shift based on what light they're under and what conditions are in. You're going to see a squad of Howling Banshees all with the same power weapons with this stuff on, but the, the paint's going to look different for every single Banshee in that unit just because of how they're placed. So the set comes with six different colours. So you've got Orange Violet, Electric Blue Intense Violet, Green Blue Violet, Bright Gold Brown, Old Gold Grey Violet, and red gold. Try saying that when you've had a bit of a drink. Now, all of you guys out there that have eyes will notice that these aren't the colours, or a lot of them aren't the colours that it claims to be. So, the electric blue intense violet looks white in the box. So does the green blue violet. So does the bright gold brown. And the red gold is pink, and the old grey violet is purple. So, yeah, not the colours that you expect them to be. But we'll give him a test and I'll show you how they work and then you can make your mind up and I'll give my little bit of a review at the end. So to keep things fair and to keep things all basically the same consistency and to be able to get a true reading of how these colours are, I grabbed six Space Marine shoulder pads from the Primaris box that I'm not using for factions that I, I won't use. And all I did is get some cork from wine or from, yeah, we drink a lot of wine in our house. But yeah. Any old cork will do or any sort of stuff like this will do. And then I just use a paper clip. So um, bend and cut a paper clip. Stick it into the cork. You can glue it if you want to. You can use it multiple times then. And then all I did is stick some blue tack on the back of the shoulder pads. And then this way I can pick them up, get them sprayed. It's not going to get all of my fingers, all of my hands. And we can get a proper accurate true reading of how these colours come out. The instructions in the set recommends that these are based in black. So I just use my airbrush. You don't have to use an airbrush. Use a rattle can. If you've got a rattle can, absolutely fine. These do work better, by the way, via airbrush. You can still use them by brush. I've tried them. They just don't come out as smooth and as nice. So if you've got an airbrush, best to use them through there. I didn't really use any thinners on these. Either. They are quite thin paints, which is why it just works better with airbrush. But I use Vallejo Black Primer. Slap some on just to get a standard base coat. And then we're working from the same sort of base on every single one of these so you can get the true nature of the color and how it all comes out but yeah as you can see super easy slap on a bit of primer so with the primer dried and laid down and with a brief understanding of how this is going to work i think it's time to start getting some paint on these and start having a look how much these color shifts do actually show up so the first one that we tried in the range was the orange violet so as usual we airbrush paints Get a bit of a shake just to make sure all the pigment is mixed in. Now this one does actually look quite orangey, not necessarily too violet uh, while it's in the box. But again, straight into the pot. No thinners or anything used on this. And we're just going to lay it straight onto the top of the pauldron. And the first thing I noticed when trying to lay this on is just how easy it did spray. There were no splattering, there were no stuttering. 
it laid straight on with no spider webbing or anything like that. Very wet. It almost felt as if I was just spraying pure water or thinners or something onto the pauldron. But it laid on really, really nicely. And I noticed as I was twisting it to get all those angles, uh, do you know what? It did actually have an orange and a violet tint to it, like a pearlescent tint. It, it blew my mind to say that something that came out of an airbrush could do that effect that instantly and that quickly. So quite excited actually by the initial results of the orange violet space dust color shift. Uh, I wanted to give the electric blue intense violet a go because this is what I wanted to use in the first place for me howling banshees and the mirror swords and all that sort of stuff. And again straight into the pot, literally no finners, anything like that, straight onto the pauldron. And this one for me, as I say, there was quite a lot of buying purchase power behind this this is the reason why i wanted to do this in the first place for this one color really i just want to see what the others would be like in the set and i was not disappointed as soon as i laid this on you got a really deep purple color in the shadows and in the recess areas and then as soon as it hit the light it was it was electric blue again it laid on so easily but it looks bloody gorgeous so so far so good two out of two looking absolutely fantastic Bearing in mind, that last one was a white liquid that sprayed blue and purple. How's it happen? I, I can't get my head around it, to be quite honest. But anyway, on to the green, blue, violet. Again, I was excited to see how this would work again, because this could be an alternate colour that I could use for the mirror swords, for the electric blue intense violet colour, and move it more to a green shade. So, straight into the pot. No thinners, nothing like that again. Straight in. And in between these, all I'm doing is adding some water, giving it a rinse out, drying it out and sticking the new shade straight back in and then straight onto spraying. And again, so far, three out of three, every single colour I've put on so far just lays on so easily. There is no splattering, speckling, nothing. It gives a really nice even coat. I was quite cautious not to put it on too thick because, again, it's a white liquid that's going through the airbrush and it's coming out bloody green and, and purple. How's it doing it? So I was very careful not to overdo it so I didn't get any pulling or any pooling or anything like that because it would make it look terrible. It needs to be with such a smooth coat. But you can see this is one coat. It's super easy and it is green and it's purple. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. So on to our fourth colour now, bright gold brown. I wasn't sure what I expected from this, I'll be honest with you, because gold paint is gold paint, right? I expected just to put it on it and just turn out gold and maybe have a bit of shading with the brown maybe i don't know like as if you put a wash over it so i wasn't quite sure what i was expecting from this at all but again this one went on really really smooth again four out of four no bother whatsoever straight onto the pauldron and again i can't believe the color that went into the pot versus the color that comes out when it hits the pauldron it's it is gold it's a bit more greeny gold than i'd say brown gold but you can see where it is in terms of the shade you are getting a bit of browns and stuff in there but again, it's pearlescent gold and it's, it's seconds to do. And I, it blows my mind that this is something that we can just spray onto our minis and get this sort of effect so fast. So, so far, so good. We're on to our fifth paint. Only two left, including this one. And I was feeling quite confident by now. I thought, do you know what? I know the paint inside this pot looks like it's purple, like it's more violet on the hue scale. But I reckon this will come out gold because the rest of them haven't let me down and I bet it's going to be super easy to do, super easy to apply using the same sort of method that I've been doing before. And yeah, I wasn't surprised. It went on super slick, super, super easy. The biggest surprise for me, to be quite honest, is how bright that paint is in the pot and how bright it was in the airbrush cup. And as soon as I sprayed it, it went gold. You still had a bit of that, that violet hue that you had originally in the pot and in the paint itself. But I thought after looking at the other ones which had the white pigment or seemingly white pigment in the pots that then turned to different colours, I expected this to be more violet than it was. Absolutely blown away with this one. A really nice colour. I'm going to find somewhere to use this. So here we are. On to our final colour in the set and that's the red gold. Again, first impressions, this is pink. It shouldn't come out gold, potentially red, but that's quite a vibrant pink to be fair. And I wasn't sure how this would turn out. And again, just like the other five before it, it laid on so easily. Super, super easy. It just felt like I was spraying water. I wasn't concerned about clogs or about it getting stuck or spider webbing or anything. It just came out super, super smooth. Straight onto the pauldron. And with it having the curve nature in the pauldron, just like the rest of them, as soon as it hit it, you just saw the colour pop and it's immediate. It's seconds worth of effort to get these sort of results. 
And again, I'm not going to lie, I didn't expect to like this colour. I wasn't sure how I'd use this or where I'd use it. But that's a nice colour. Again, it's more pink than red, to be fair, but it's still definitely gold. So I bet you're thinking to yourself, well, that's great, Nightfall. Good job, pal. But that's only on a pauldron. What about over a full model? And to be fair, I had the same sort of reservations as well. So I thought, well, let's put your reservations and my reservations to one side and let's give this a go and let's find out exactly how this is going to look across a full model. Because if you're new to painting or you want a quick tabletop ready army, you're having a game with your mates over the weekend and nothing's paint and everything's grey, you might want to just be able to give this bit a go and it not look ridiculous on the tabletop. So I thought, let's give it a go on a full model. I got a Assault Intercessor, sprayed him with a black primer the vallejo black primer that i use on the pauldrons as well and then pick my favorite color and yeah before you ask it is a 3d printed model so with the big space boy all primed all dressed and ready to get his final color for his chapter with zero layer lines might i add i decided to pick my favorite color out of the bunch and the one that i bought the set for originally the whole purpose of doing this which was the electric blue intense violet it's what i wanted for the mirror swords for the banshees and i thought is this viable to do over something bigger, perhaps a Wraith Blade or a Wraith Guard or maybe even something bigger? Is this is this good enough you could slap it on the side of maybe even a Dreadnought or a tank or something? So I stuck it in the pot. Again, zero thinners with this. It's so easy to use. There's no gauging whether that's a milky consistency or not. You just bang it into the pot and start spraying. And as you can see here, and I've said it multiple times before, but this lays on so bloody smooth. Now, as an airbrusher for the last year or so, and for anyone who's ever airbrushed, they'll all tell you, getting dry tip, and that is not rude, that is an actual <laughs> physical thing that you can get on the airbrush where paint dries on the end of the tip and clogs. You don't get it with this. There's no gauging on whether that consistency will flow right or if you're going to get speckling or anything. It just comes out because it's designed to use it primarily through an airbrush again you can use it as a as a brush on but i found one using it for a brush on you did get a little bit more brush stroke lines whereas with an airbrush it's always going to be just smoother and overall just a nice effect and i really hope you're enjoying the transition of the color for this as much as i was when i did it and as much as i am now editing this video it's bloody gorgeous and just to show you again looking into the airbrush cup it's white and it's come out blue. How's it doing it? So overall, I'm really impressed with these paints. I left them to dry 24 hours and then recorded afterwards just to see if the paint had dissipated, if it had tarnished or anything like that, and it hadn't. Every single one of them looked just as good as when I sprayed them originally for this session, for this recording session, to show you guys how they, they worked. And I'm really impressed. For less than 20 quid, it's now really, to be fair, to get this sort of effect and it's not something as i say personally i would use for a full army because i i like to paint my stuff individually and just get some more effects and to, to be able to do more wet blending and feathering and to get more weathering done and zenithal highlights all that sort of good stuff but for somebody who just wants a really cool pearlescent flip effect for paint you can't go wrong with these especially for the cost and for the ease of use you just can't go wrong with them so would I recommend you buy this product? Yeah, absolutely, 100%, it's a no-brainer. Even if you're using it by brush, I'd still buy this product. You can't get this effect as quick and as easy as you can without this product, you just can't. So guys, that is my review on the Vallejo Color Shift Space Dust Pack. I really hope you've enjoyed this sort of content. It's been a while since I've done anything on the channel just because of Nurgle's plague and kids and new jobs and being stuck in the house and stuff. So. I'm excited to be back and make new content for you. I'm going to try and make this more of a regular thing. If you do like what you see, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what sort of stuff you'd like to see in the future, and we will most definitely see you in the next one.